Hi, I'm Chuck Gray and I'm living the American dream. Today I'm going to tell you about how I lost 22 pounds in 60 days and never got hungry. I think we all have the dream of looking good and feeling good. However, over time we may let the waistline slip just a little bit if we're not careful. And that's what happened to me. One day, I woke up and found that I was 35 pounds overweight. And I started thinking I better take charge of that part of my life just like I had taken charge of most other areas of my life. Then one day, my son came over shortly thereafter and he told me about a great new diet called the Keto Diet that has become quite popular. I can only assume that it's popular because it works. A ketogenic diet is not really all that new except to me. I only stumbled across it when my son introduced me to it and he insisted that me and my wife embrace the idea of having a food lifestyle change. Now, I know a food lifestyle change may sound sad, but it's not nearly as terrible as my wife and I thought it would be. In fact, it was really pretty easy to make that kind of a change, all things considered. When I saw all the added benefits that come from a low carb diet, I started to embrace the whole idea of making that kind of a change in my lifestyle. Now, I also found out that studies show that a very low carb, high fat diet, they're extremely effective for uh, weight loss and, and for healthy weight loss. They are even touted to help in areas like epilepsy and diabetes, or at least so I'm told. I'm not a doctor and I don't have epilepsy or diabetes, but I surely did notice a change in my overall sense of well-being because I was on the keto diet, not to mention my pant size going down. Besides, I'm getting older. I know that's scary, but I am getting older and the weight loss benefits were intriguing to me. I also understand that there's some early evidence that low carb, high fat diets might be able to address Alzheimer. What was I saying? Oh yes, Alzheimer. A few types of cancers and some other worrisome ailments are also uh, benefited by a low-carb, high-fat diet. So what exactly is a ketogenic diet? Long story short, no carbs and high fats. There's really a little bit more to it than that, but essentially you would limit your daily intake of carbohydrates from 20 grams to 30 grams per day. You can go as high as 50 grams per day, but if you're at 50 grams per day, you're almost off the diet at that level of carbs. Now, you may be thinking that there's no way that you can stick to a keto diet plan without cereal, milk, bread, ice cream, cakes, candy bars, potato chips, corn chips, potatoes, pasta, rice or beans, but it's not really as challenging as it may seem. My wife and I got along quite nicely without all those high carbohydrate foods. We had to change our diet, of course, but we simply replaced our former high carbohydrates meal for keto-friendly foods that still taste good and are actually quite filling. So what I've done for you today is listed 15 foods that you'll find are not only nutritional, but actually taste good and keep you feeling full during the day. At least they kept us feeling full. Now this list of 15 is certainly not comprehensive, but it will give you a great start. And after a week or so of this new way of eating, I think you'll find it easier than you think. So let's get on with the list. 15 low carb foods that you could eat on a keto diet. Number one, eggs. The most important meal of the day, or so they say, is breakfast. So let's start with eggs. Talk about versatility. There are so many ways to prepare eggs and they are low cost, low carb, and extremely healthy for you. A single large egg has a little more than half a gram of carbs, which makes eggs perfect for your keto diet. But there's more to the egg than just low carbs. Eggs also stabilize your blood sugars and trigger an increased feeling of fullness. Eating eggs and bacon every morning really did start the day off right for us. I can honestly say I never got hungry on this diet plan. Oh, and don't just eat the egg whites. Eat the whole egg. Most of the nutrients and antioxidants are in the yolk. And don't worry about high cholesterol levels in eggs. They don't raise cholesterol levels in most people and actually appear to utilize cholesterol in a way that moderates risk for heart disease. Bottom line, eggs are good for you. They have less than one gram of carbs per egg and they keep you feeling full so you don't feel hungry between meals and that's important. So let's move on to number two, bacon. 
actually, this food category includes all meats and poultry, not just bacon. But when you're talking about breakfast, I had to title it bacon. I mean, what are eggs without bacon? Besides, everyone loves bacon, right? Sausage too. And in the keto foodless diet, all meats and poultries are standard on the menu. So eat up. Fresh meats and poultries are high in minerals and vitamins. They provide a great source of protein and they have no carbs. High quality protein meats help protect muscle mass, which can be important in a low carb keto style diet. Plus, this diet is not just low in carbs, but it's also a high fat diet. These fats, which are a must in good tasting steak, are actually helpful in providing omega-3 fats and antioxidants, especially if the beef was grass-fed. Grass-fed beef is better for you than grain-fed beef, although grain-fed beef is just fine. Bottom line, there's no carbs in meat or poultry, but they do contain high-quality proteins, fats, and nutrients. Let's move on to number three, butter and cream. When you're cooking breakfast, you may want to fry your eggs in real butter rather than using a spray-on non-stick product. However, bacon grease or real butter is great according to the keto, keto diet rules. Butter and cream both provide healthy fats that you need on a ketogenic diet, and neither has but just a hint of carbs, and they really make food taste great. A big juicy steak fried in butter really brings out the flavor, but I digress. Oh, by the way, you can mix a little of that heavy cream in with your scrambled eggs. They really fluff up the eggs and they make them taste great too. And they add that high fat that you need in a high fat diet. Now, contrary to old wives tales, butter and cream don't cause heart disease. In fact, Newsweek cited a study that indicates that consuming high fat dairy products could cut the risk of heart attack and stroke. Now, that does not mean that milk is a good keto diet food. All milk, at least cow milk, has about 12 grams of carbs per cup, so leave the milk at the store. That's too high of a carb count for a limited carb ketogenic diet. Cream, however, is a whole different matter. It's low carb and full of good fats. Heavy whipping cream may not be acceptable to pour over your cereal, but it is awesome in scrambled eggs for breakfast. In fact, you shouldn't be eating cereal for breakfast at all. Cereal is high carb. One more point of interest. Conjugated linoleic acid, or CLA, is a naturally occurring fatty acid which you will find in meat and dairy products. CLA helps you lose fat and maintain that weight loss. Bottom line, butter and cream are almost completely carb-free. Meat, fatty dairy products, butter, cheese, and cream are all high in CLA, which appears to promote weight loss. So let's move on to number four, cheese. Cheese is another favorite of mine. I love cheese. Maybe that's why I love the ketogenic diet so much. There are so many cheeses and all of them, as far as I know, are low carb and high in fat. And as a big bonus, they're delicious, nutritious, and they make you feel ambitious. I don't really know about the ambitious part, but it sounded fun to say. Cheese, like butter and cream, is rich in saturated fats. Cheese also contains CLA, nature's special weight loss ingredient that we mentioned earlier. CLA has been linked to the loss of body fat and may assist in protecting against heart disease. Additionally, cheese can reduce the loss of muscle mass that comes with aging, which applies to meat, which makes cheese a perfect food for a keto diet. Bottom line, cheese has very few carbs, contains naturally occurring fatty acids that assist with weight loss and weight maintenance. It tastes great and is an excellent source of protein. So let's move on to number five, fish and seafood. Fish and cheese don't really go well together, at least not served together, but it, just like cheese, fish and seafood do fit nicely into our list of keto-friendly foods. Tuna, salmon, halibut, bass, and other fish have zero carbs, but they're high in vitamins and minerals. Conversely, the carbs in shellfish may be a little bit of a different matter. As an example, crab meat or shrimp are generally carb-free. But there are some types of shellfish, like clams, mussels, and oysters, that do contain higher amounts of carbs, so stay away from those. Squid and octopus do as well. Remember, a keto diet has a daily carb range of between 20 and 30 grams each day, so keep that in mind. Fish are also rich in omega-3 fats, which we discussed earlier. And as you probably heard, a diet that is high in fish has been shown 
to lower disease and improve your mental acuity. So bottom line, most fish and seafood are low carb or carb free and serve as a great food for getting vitamins, minerals, and omega-3 fatty acids. Stay away from seafoods like clams, mussels, and oysters, and squid and octopus. Number six, vegetables. Broccoli and cauliflower are fine, but uh, potatoes are out. What's the difference as it relates to a ketogenic diet? In a word, starch. And starch equals carbs. That means that if you eat corn, beets, potatoes, peas, yams, or any of that other good stuff, at any one meal, you could exceed your entire carbs max for the entire day. Cauliflower and broccoli, however, are low in carbohydrates, but high in fiber. This high fiber count can actually work to your advantage. You see, in any food that has fiber, you can directly subtract the fiber content from your food's total carb count for that food item. It's a simple formula. Carbs minus fiber equals your net carbs. For example, let's say one cup of cauliflower has five grams of total carbs, and the fiber in that same cup of cauliflower comes in at two grams. Now you can legitimately subtract the two grams of fiber from the five total grams of carbs for a net carbs total of three grams. Carbs minus fiber equals net carbs, or C minus F equals NC. This same formula works on any food that you want to add to your diet. Um, I'm sorry for the math. Just look at any food label on the back of the box or can for your net carbs count, which is the total carbs minus any fiber. So let's compare cauliflower to potatoes and we'll find out why potatoes are out and cauliflower and broccoli are in. The net carb count for one cup of cauliflower is three grams, but the net carb count for potatoes is a whopping 32 grams. That's why cauliflower is in and potatoes are out. Non-starchy veggies like leaf lettuce, broccoli, and cauliflower are low in carbs, but high in nutrients, including vitamin C and several other minerals. As a rule of thumb, choose vegetables that grow above the ground, like broccoli, cauliflower, zucchini, lettuce, and cucumbers. Carrots and potatoes grow below the ground, and they are more starchy in nature, so leave them out. What's more, low-carb cauliflower can be uh, substituted to replace potatoes in some recipes like kale soup. Uh, my wife makes a delicious kale soup. Uh, this soup is very good, by the way. And there are many other ketogenic diet recipes that will make your lifestyle change seem so easy to maintain. Bottom line, vegetables work well for the keto diet, but you have to be selective. The net carbs are key. Number seven, avocados. Let's try the net carbs formula on avocados. A medium avocado half has about nine grams of carbs. The fiber count would be about seven grams, therefore nine grams of carbs minus seven grams of fiber equals two grams of net carbs for that avocado half. That's totally doable in your daily ketosis diet. Avocados are rich in vitamins, minerals, and may even help improve your cholesterol levels. Avocados are a very important, healthy addition to a ketogenic diet. Bottom line, Avocados have only two grams of net carbs per avocado half and are high in fiber. Avocados should definitely be a part of your ketosis diet plan. Let's go with number eight. Cream cheese, cottage cheese, and yogurt. We already discussed cheese, but cottage cheese, yogurt, and cream cheese fall into a very special category for me, and that category is dessert. Although these foods do have some carbs, they still work great on a ketogenic diet. First, let's talk about the yogurt. To be clear, I'm talking about plain Greek yogurt, not that sugared up stuff that uh, has all the fruit and stuff in it. If you eat one half cup of plain Greek yogurt, that will provide you with five grams of carbs. The same amount of cottage cheese gives you about four grams of carbs and a half of cup of cream cheese contains about four and a half grams of carbs. But the cool part is, is that when you mix any one of these keto-friendly ingredients with certain low sugar, low carb fruits and mix them together, you get keto-friendly desserts. Just mix the cream cheese and an artificial sweetener 
and with some fresh berries, and we'll talk about fresh berries in number nine. But you whip that all together and pour that mixture into the mini muffin size muffin pans, the ones that are about the size of a silver dollar, not, not the big muffins, but the smaller muffins. And you pour those into those, those, those uh, divots and place that whole muffin pan into the freezer until frozen. And then you serve two or three at a time as frozen bite size, uh, kind of a yogurt dessert. Um, it's really cream cheese, but uh, it tastes great. Uh, I also stirred the unfrozen mixture that I just described into cottage cheese to sweeten it up a little bit as a treat as well. You could also add the mix to your yogurt if you like. And the best part is it's all good for you and keto compliant. Also, yogurt and cottage cheese are known to help decrease appetite and give you a feeling of fullness. And that's important. All three can be used as a tasty snack with a little help from berries and sugar substitutes. They can also be mixed with chopped nuts or cinnamon for a treat that satisfies the sweet tooth. And I have a very large sweet tooth. Bottom line, Greek yogurt, cream cheese, and cottage cheese all have between four and five grams of carbs per half cup. They help lower appetite and provide the feeling of fullness. By the way, if you'd like some delicious keto recipes using any of these great foods, you can find them in the Ketosis Cookbook. In this fabulous resource, you'll find more than 370 keto diet recipes that are easy to prepare and come with a complete nutritional data. They even include a 12-week ketosis diet meal plan. With almost 400 recipes, that's actually enough for you to experience a new recipe each day. Well, let's move on to number nine, strawberries and berries. With fruits, you just have to remember one thing. Most fruits are too high in carbs to be included on a keto diet menu, but berries are the exception. And here's why. Carbs minus fiber equals net carbs, or C minus F equals NC. Berries are high in fiber and low in carbs, so find the total carbs and subtract out the fiber. These are the carb counts for one cup of a few different berries. Strawberries. You start with 11 grams of total carbs minus 2 grams of fiber, leaving you 9 grams of net carbs. Raspberries. You start with 12 grams of total carbs minus 7 grams of fiber equals 5 grams of net carbs. Blackberries have 10 grams of total carbs minus 5 grams of fiber equals 5 grams of net carbs. So blackberries only have 5 grams. Blueberries are very similar. They only have 14 carbs, but you subtract out the fiber of 2 and you get 12 net carbs for blueberries. As you probably know, dark berries like blueberries and blackberries are chock full of antioxidants that are said to help reduce inflammation and protect against contracting other illnesses. Bottom line, berries are abundant in antioxidants, vitamins, and other nutrients that are thought to diminish risk of disease. They contain acceptable levels of net carbohydrates per serving, and thank goodness for that. Let's move on to number 10, seeds and nuts. Although seeds and nuts are low in net carbs, they are rich in fiber, and that helps you not feel hungry. These are the net carb counts for 100 grams of seeds and nuts. 100 grams is about three handfuls. Flax seeds have a net carb count of 1.6 grams. Walnuts have a net gram count of 2.8 grams. Pumpkin seeds have a net gram count of 3.3 grams. Brazil nuts have a net carb count of 4.2 grams. Pecans have a net carb count of 4.3 grams. Macadamias have a net carb count of 5.2 grams. Chia seeds have a net carb count of 7.7 .7 grams. And sunflower seeds have a net carb count of 8.1. Almonds, my favorite, have a net carb count of 10. Sesame seeds have a net carb count of 11.5. Pistachios have a net carb count of 17.2. And cashews have a net carb count of 29.7. Oops, that's a little high. Actually, that's a lot high. Although I don't mess with nuts or seeds much, I do love almonds and they are very keto friendly. They are high in fats and low in carbs, which is exactly what we're looking for in a keto diet. Eating nuts has been shown to reduce the risk of heart disease in some, and some cancers. It helps with depression, especially the cashews do, although they're too high to eat. 
and other prolonged diseases. Bottom line, seeds and nuts can be wholesome, healthy, and full of fiber, but low in carbs. And that's Keto Perfect. Uh, go easy on the cashews, they're a little high. So let's move on to number 11, shirataki noodles. Shirataki noodles are made from a glucominum fiber that comes from the konjac plant. This glucominin is considered dietary fiber and can absorb as much as 50 times its own weight in water, but it only has one gram of carb per three ounce serving. When you eat shirataki noodles, they become gelatinous and they tend to slow down the movement of your meal through your system. Therefore, you feel full for a longer period of time. Shirataki noodles serve as a great substitute for other types of high carb noodles in any keto menu or recipe. Bottom line, shirataki noodles have only about one gram of carbs per serving, and these noodles slow down the movement of your food through your system and give you that feeling of being full over a longer period of time. Let's go to number 12, olives. Have you ever heard of oloropin? Oloropin is the bitter taste that you might experience if you were to eat a raw olive. Don't eat raw olives, they must be cured first. The good news is, is that oluropin is an antioxidant in olives that helps lower bad cholesterol, prevent cancer, lowers blood pressure, provides anti-inflammatory benefits, and guards against mental decline. Olives vary in size and therefore they vary in carb content, but don't worry about it too much because it takes 100, it takes 100 olives to give you a net carb intake of 1.5 grams. That's right, 100 green olives only have a combined net carb count of 1.5 grams. That's 10.4 grams of total carbs minus 8.9 grams of fiber equals 1.5 grams of net carbs. Bottom line, olives are rich in antioxidants and very low in carbs. They make super friendly foods for keto dieters. Olives can also help with your heart and lower your blood pressure, and they taste great. Be sure to add olives to your ketogenic diet food list. Number 13, extra virgin olive oil. Now you might be asking yourself, why is olive oil listed when you can't really eat it? In a word, fat. Actually, you can eat it. it it's just not a meal in and of itself, but you have to cook your meal with something and olive oil might as well be the oil of choice, especially extra virgin olive oil because of its healthy properties. It helps your heart, your bones, your brain, your skin. It protects against heart disease, stroke, depression, skin cancer, and diabetes. It lowers your cholesterol and your blood pressure. Also, extra virgin olive oil is rich in antioxidants that are known to protect your heart by diminishing inflammation and olive oil has no carbs, zero, zilch, nada. Cook with it, use it on salads, or even take a spoonful or two each day for good measure. Bottom line, extra virgin olive oil is high in heart healthy fats and is antioxidant rich. It's great for salads and low temp cooking. All right, let's move on to number 14, sugar. Not, not sugar, sugar substitutes. The only reason I included sugar substitutes was that sometimes you just need your food to be a tad sweeter, but honey and sugar are not the best choices for a ketogenic diet. So I simply included sugar substitutes as a way to address that um, sweet tooth that you might have. So a couple of the options are stevia. You can buy stevia at the store. Stevia leaves are used to produce a natural sweetener to serve as a great sugar substitute. There's also a product called Swerve, which is another sugar substitute that you can buy, and that is what I use. Bottom line, you're going to find keto-friendly foods now and then that may need to be a tad bit sweeter to fit your taste. Having a good ketogenic sugar substitute on hand will decrease your temptation to use sugar or honey as a way to soothe your sweet tooth. So let's move on to number 15. This is my favorite, and I saved the best for last. Dark chocolate. The dark chocolate category also includes cocoa powder. Both serve as a fantastic and extremely delectable source of antioxidants. Dark chocolate has been shown to lower blood pressure and maintain artery health, thereby reducing the risk of heart disease. I know you may not believe it, but 
chocolate can be on the menu while you are on a ketogenic diet if you use dark chocolate. And the darker the better. It is recommended that your choice of dark chocolate have at least 80% cacao or better. But be careful, I give you this warning. Read the net carbs on the back of the chocolate bar. Some commercial bars say dark chocolate, but they are still full of sugar. And as you know, sugar is not really part of the keto diet. By the way, cocoa powder provides as many antioxidants as do blueberries and the acai berry and other dark berries. Bottom line, in chocolate that retains 70 to 85% cacao solids, the net carbs for one ounce of dark chocolate may contain about 10 net grams or less, depending on the brand. It is high in antioxidants and may diminish the threat of heart disease. So here's my final word. I want abundance, and I want abundance in every area of my life, but having an abundant waistline was not really my idea of living the American dream, at least, at least not my American dream. So I took charge of my life, and it has worked so well for me. I'm 22 pounds lighter, I feel better, I look better, my clothes look better on me. My self-esteem has improved, and believe me, I always had great self-esteem. I have to say that losing 22 pounds has literally made my life happier. Yes, I am happier because of a high-quality ketogenic diet menu. And with recipes like you can find in the Ketosis Cookbook, I've easily and effortlessly lost 22 pounds of fat in only two months. And I feel great. I feel awesome. Now, I can't say that the same will happen to you. You'll have to try it for yourself. But by adhering to a solid ketogenic diet menu, I sincerely believe that you can achieve regular systematic weight loss, have better control over your blood sugars, and meet many other health-related goals. Fortunately, a keto diet can include a wide variety of nutritious, tasty, and, and uh, versatile foods that uh, are like the ones we've discussed here today that allow you to remain within your daily carb range. So that's the 15 foods that you can eat on a keto diet, and that's how I lost 22 pounds in 60 days without getting hungry. And if you'd like to know more about the keto diet, I'll leave a link below in the description to a great resource for keto recipes. I do use affiliate links to cover my costs, and today is no exception. So check out the link below and see if the keto cookbook the ketosis cookbook is good for you. I hope that you found this valuable. And if you have, please click the like button. If you'd like more videos like this, check the subscribe button. And don't forget to comment below and let me know how I can help you live your American dream. I'm Chuck Gray and I'm living the American dream and I'm helping you live yours.